All right, it is time for a book haul. And I don't have a card that says that. <laughs> I just realized these were spine, the wrong spine out. Okay. Hey, everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you books that I picked up recently. I actually picked up so many books in this particular haul that I've actually ha had to separate it out into two videos. It's definitely my biggest haul, and I pay that tribute to the fact that when I was at the store, I, I forgot to say, I was at the, this is from the Toronto Public Library's permanent bookstore, which is called Bookends, where they have a whole bunch of um, either like used books, donated books, withdrawn books from the library, and it's down at the Toronto Reference Library at Young and Bloor, and the prices are amazing. They're amazing. Most things are a dollar. They have some sort of like nicer stuff or newer stuff or whatever, it might be a little bit more. And then for re regular old paperbacks, it's uh, 50 cents each or three for a dollar. So, I, I got a lot, especially for this particular haul and putting all of the mysteries and thrillers together because it is currently thriller -a thon And then in March, we have March Mystery Madness. And I, in particular, wanted to visit bookends for this because I don't read a lot of mysteries and thrillers. So I thought it would be great to pick up a whole bunch and set, have them on hand so I can just you know, have lots to choose from and just see what suits my mood. And March Mystery Madness is a whole month. It's a whole month. So that's lots of time to get some reading in. So I've separated out the mysteries and thrillers and then all of the other books will be in a separate haul. So, but I picked up way too much. <laughs> way too much. And oh, as I was going to say, I think the reason I picked up way too much is that the staff noticed that I had this huge arm. Like I had all of these books stacked up on my arm, like to here. And she said, oh, if you want, you can leave this at the desk. And I was great. And and I went and I left and I went and picked up a whole other stack of books, which is too many books. It's too many books. So anyway, next time I got to be smarter, not bring, not take as many, buy as many books or bring my little cart with me because it was too many. Anyway, I got them home. Now let's take a look at them. So, um, yeah. So let me know, especially if any of these are particularly a mystery versus a thriller, because that's sort of kind of how I am thinking about these books and I don't really know so much about them. I don't know very much about them at all. I'm probably going to go rather quickly because I don't know much about them all. So the first one that I picked up here is Dying Embers by Margaret Murray. I don't know anything about this. It looks like it's set at a school at the start of a school week and then oh a burnt corpse is fa discovered. Eek! Not great. Okay one challenge I do have with mysteries and thrillers is all of the you know murder. Not a big fan. So I really tried to pick ones that were perhaps had a different angle. I don't think it was that successful because book number one definitely has it. So yeah. Yep. This one. Hey. So that's book one. Uh, next up I have uh, Minette Walters' The Breaker. This one also corpse found um, and on a desert shore. And this one actually has, it has like maps and stuff inside. So it really is like following I imagine following the investigation and trying to figure out the things that happened. It says it's a whodunit of the finest order by the Ottawa Citizen. I recognize this style, like the cover style, and I think when I worked at bookstores, oh, it's embossed. Um, ooh, that's embossed too. Um, when I worked at bookstores, I definitely we set we sold um, Annette Walters books, so I recognize it, and I, that sort of caught my eye. If I recognized an author, I pretty much picked it up. So <laughs> I picked up a lot of books. A lot of books. Next up, um, Jillian White's The Sleeper. This one I don't know anything about, but it's set in a wintry seaside resort or at a wintry seaside re resort, an old woman goes missing and there's also a family gathering for Christmas. I always think these sort of isolated situations, obviously this house is far from things, is definitely recipe for scariness. So, and this one says it's a spooky psychological thriller. So, ooh, spooky, maybe it's paranormal. That would be good. I did not mean to pick up Christmas-centered book, but still wintry here. Well, the snow is almost melted. We got a lot of snow last weekend. Okay, the next book is Mary Higgins Clark, who is the queen of suspense. I thought Agatha Christie was. Maybe she's the queen of mystery. This one looks like it's set during a high school reunion, and then there were secrets, and then a murderer on a mission of vengeance. Ooh, against women who once humiliated him. Okay, so that's very high school reunion <laughs> Um uh, Oh, I forgot to say the title. Nighttime is my time. So yeah, if I recognize the author and it sounded of interest, it pretty much went into the yes pile. So curious to check that out. Next up, oh man, this is one. This is in the beautiful cover category. 
And and for Thrillerathon, there is pick your favorite cover, and this this might win, this huge contender, and that is Masks by Pil Bill Ponzini. Like, isn't that beautiful? I love it. This one looks totally kind of trippy. It's set in New Orleans with a guy that's down on his luck, uh, and <laughs> there's this thing about a snake and its hands being sticky. And then the snake whispers to him, twisted, twisted, all twisted in the hole I'm in. <laughs> what is this written? It feels like 60s, but I think it's 80s. I can't believe- oh yeah, oh yeah, 81. So I actually can't believe that books that look like this are now from the 80s. That makes me feel old. And I've actually been really, really excited about some smaller titles. Even though there's lots of text, man, there's lots of text. But I'm really digging the idea of reading books that are like in the 200 page land. So I think I'm going to read that one pretty quickly. And then also I found one that was kind of more like an arc. Um, so this one is, well, it's an uncorrected proof. So that is the tagline. Escape was just the beginning, but the book is actually called Baby Doll. And this one is by Holly Overton. And it came out last year. Or, no, 2016. So, yeah, so that was kind of cool. I'm, I gotta say, I mostly picked it because it was an uncorrected proof, and that's pretty unusual for me, at least, to find. I don't see them in a lot of stores. So I was curious about that. This one looks like it is someone who is held captive, and what happens next? We shall see. We shall see. So that's Baby Doll. And I wonder if you've noticed there's any trending with those books that I have relayed so far if there's any pattern you perhaps may have noticed in any of those i'll give you a moment all the intrigue and mystery folk they are all standalones which i found really hard to find for mysteries and thrillers they seem to be really a genre that lends itself to series so all of the rest of the books that i bought all of the rest of the books i bought are accidentally series and I think they're all well in the middle of the series. I hope that's okay. I think it, I think it is. I think it is a genre that is not like a science fiction series where you're world building book to book. I think these mostly follow, you know, cases or events that are, you know, more contained. Of course, hopefully there's character development book to book. So, but if any of these really stand out as like, oh no, you really want to start at the beginning, let me know because I think all but one of them are in the middle of a series. And one that I am, I think, maybe the most excited about out of the series books, oh, maybe not, there's lots that I'm excited about, is Zero Hour by Clive Cussler, with Graham Brown, with the with. And this is in the Numa Files. It is number 11 of the Numa Files, and it is an underwater exploration series. How did I not know about this? I love underwater stuff. So I'm super excited about that. It's obviously set in Australia. There's a better picture on the inside some kind of explosion there's a boat there's a helicopter there's explosions looks very exciting and this is one of those taller thinner paperbacks which i actually find for me fit my hand really nice and they're very floppy and they open really well and i'm i this is going to be high on the list of soon to read even though it's 11 of 15 plus books <laughs> okay next one What's this one called? Uh, the Mind Murderers. Murders. Murder. Mind Murders. And this is by Jean-William van der Wettering. And this is actually a Dutch book. And so this actually might work for me for March Mystery Madness because they have one category that lends itself to reading stuff in translation. So this is uh, translated and it is the eight of 17 books in the... <laughs> I'm going to just put it up here. I'm not going to be able to say that. Grivjivastara and De Greer. Too many consonants in a row for, for me on that one. So, yeah. And this is another skinny one at like 200 pages. And uh, they're cops. And it looks like they this one has, there's a murder without a corpse and a corpse without a murder. So it follows two different cases and perhaps they are connected. I'm actually quite excited about this one. I think it's a real good contender for March Mystery Madness. Next up, Jack Higgins, A Darker Place. This is the 16th of 22 in the Sean Dillon series. And this one's like espionage. And I think it follows, or the antagonist is a Russian writer, an ex-paratrooper. And I think his plan is 
it says his plan is to infiltrate British and American intelligence, but I think he might still be working for the Russians. I think that's how it works out. Yeah. That's so, yeah. Curious about that. I don't know. I was like, oh yeah, I know this name. And then I'm like, do I know this name? Do I know this name? I'm not sure about that. I know it now. And this is another one of the taller, floppier ones. So I don't read a lot of espionage stuff. I find all of the lying and duplicity really hard to keep track of. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, next up we have False Impressions. You can't read it because it has the sticker here, but it's False Impressions by Laura Caldwell. And this is actually a Harlequin. It is a Harlequin Mira and a Romantic Suspense, which I did not notice until I got home and I was looking at the publishers. And it is the sixth book in a five book series. Not sure how that works. And this one follows a private investigator who has a friend whose life is threatened and she wants to help her. And I thought that was awesome. Um, it's, it's a woman helping a woman and a woman. And I thought that was great. There also is a dude because it is a Harlequin, but um, that is what pulled me into this one. False impressions. Ooh, exciting. And then we have Patricia Cornwall's All That Remains. She is obviously a big name in this world. And this is a Dr. Kate Scarpetta series, and it's number three, which is pretty early. I'm kind of like, oh, should I try number one instead? I don't know. And this is bodies of people piling up. That's not great. And Dr. Kate is a medical examiner. So, but this, actually, I was impressed because this book is actually from quite a while ago. And now there's lots of stuff about medical examiners. But this is from 92. So, gosh, 92 is 26 years ago. There's adults born in 92. That is weird. Okay, and this one is not for sale in US or Canada, yet here it is. Here it is! Someone maybe bought it on the plane or something at an airport and brought it home. Who knows? Who knows what the history of this book is? So, yeah, curious about that one. Definitely a big name. And then we have Free Draw. Oh, this, look at this color. Shelby Singer. This is the second of the six, second of six books in the Jake Sampson Mysteries. And this one looks awesome. This is a real down on their luck kind of person, but going to help a friend, even if it means getting shot at occasionally. This one just, look, this one was really, the, the sort of pulpiness really pulled me in for this one. And another one that's in the sort of 200 page land. I hope none of these are too dusty for me. This will be a bit of a, it feels okay. Um, it's from 94, Paper Jacks, published by Paper Jacks, printed in Canada, look at that. So, this one has a lot of appeal as well. And the last book, the last book we have here is The Night the Gods Smiled by Eric Wright. And this is the first book in a series, yes! First of 11 in the Inspector Charlie Salter series. It is Canadian and it is set in Toronto following Inspector Charlie Salter of the Metropolitan Toronto Police, and there has been a dead body found. So, and it was the winner of the 1984 Crime Writers of Canada Arthur Ellis Award, and several other awards, and the City of Toronto Book Award. So this is a big, a big winner. I love that cover too. So that might make it into Thrillerathon for the cover. Although this is clearly a mystery because it's uh, following an investigator. Oh, it's got some French on it. Le Jardin de Paradise. 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 So there we go. That is my huge haul. I don't think there's any way I can hold them all up. Maybe I can get them in frame all at the same time. Maybe. So half of these are series. Half of them are not. There they all are in their glory. And so those are the books. And as I said, I will do another haul video for the books that are not mysteries and thrillers. Let me know if you have read any of these, if you have heard of any of these. I thought it was so much fun to just pick so many books that I, I didn't know anything about. It was a true joy. I'll leave the information for the Toronto Public Library book ends below if you haven't been there. Um, the reference library is the one that I went to, uh, the Civic Center one. The last time I checked was under renovation. It was like all of these books I got for $15. Oh, no, five. Five dollars. All of the books I bought I got for 16 total, but these books were five dollars. <laughs> and that's going to keep me busy for quite a long time. So there you go. I'll also leave information below about Thrillerathon and March Mystery Madness if you want to participate. They look like so much fun. I love readathons. I think it's going to be a really fun time for reading. All right. Thank you so much for watching.